Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. This is Trading with Liveall, and my name is Stefan Choi. And um, this is where I trade my own Reg T account using LVX to trade. Um, so I just want to kind of touch on my trading. Um, so I have been, I would say, trading pretty poorly. And in the last three days, um, I pretty much made some bonehead trades personally. So, um, you know, my account's gone down. Um, if you guys can see, uh, you know, I made from this point to this point, uh, I was up about 60 from the low to the highs. And then I pretty much given back about 10,000 in the last month, uh, basically trading. And uh, it isn't too bad. My conclusion was uh, when I did these trades, I kind of waited and I was very sure that it was a good trade. And um, I think I've been kind of trading for trading sake instead of trying to make good trades. So most likely, um, with the market um, like this, in uh, most of February, I should have just um, been long if I had an opinion and just stayed that way or uh, wait for a good point. But as you can see, it's hard to kind of keep being super long as it's going up like this, even though uh, maybe the bias is to the upside, right? Because you can have these uh, severe sell-offs. So, uh, essentially, what I kind of came to conclusion was I'm going to have to be more patient and basically pick my spots better uh, because my last, especially this last like two weeks, I would have to rate my trading um, uh, like a D minus F uh, for just, you know, for various reasons, just, just bad uh, decision making all the way around. Um, that being said, um, again, it's a slow day, so I kind of wanted to talk to you guys about uh, Baker Hughes and Halliburton. Um, they actually announced the deal, and this is the deal. So basically, you can go, you know, I typed in BHI Halliburton merger. There's this PDF that they come out with, and basically, Baker Hughes is being bought by Halliburton, right? And um, for the merger, uh, for every Baker Hughes stock you have, you'll get 1.12 shares of Halliburton and $19 in cash. You know, there's all this other stuff of when it was done. And uh, essentially, uh, and you can read all this um, when you have time, but essentially what it comes down to is that the, the deal, if approved, will most likely get done in the second half of the year. Um, if they if they can't get past the regulatory hurdle, uh, because Baker Hughes and Halliburton is the number two and three uh, oil service provider, with Schlumberger being number one, Halliburton will pay Baker Hughes 3.5 billion. Um, one billion will be paid from Baker Hughes to Halliburton if the Baker Hughes shareholders basically reject the deal. And 1.5 billion will be paid from Halliburton to Baker Hughes if Halliburton rejects the deal, which is a higher probability that Halliburton rejects the deal than Baker Hughes. And um, so that's kind of the overlay uh, of the situation. Um, for my own personal trading when I was a market maker, uh, I know a lot of you guys kind of want to know well, what, how do market makers make money, right? So what I would do is I would buy, um, okay, first of all, let's actually put down for you guys if I have notes. Okay. All right. Yes, sorry about that. Okay, so basically you're gonna get um, let me actually 
shorten this one a little bit so you guys can see. Uh, basically, you're going to get um, 1.12 of Halliburton shares for every Baker Hughes shares, right? So basically, at this point, let's say, let's just say it's 43 bucks, right? So it's going to be 43 times 1.12, right? It equals 51.6 plus $19, right? So that's 70.6. This is what you would get uh, equivalent if you actually own a BHI share right now, All right? So Baker Hughes shares is currently sixty-two eighty-nine. Uh, you subtract seventy point six. Oh, I must have done something wrong. 70.6 minus 62.89. Yeah. So nine. Spread is seven dollars and seventy-one cents. Right? Because the deal price is, and I'll go over it one more time, is one point, just so I know I'm doing this correct, right? Is one point one two of times forty. Three plus nineteen in cash, sixty-seven sixteen. So I'm glad I actually did it again because I must have punched in some wrong number, right? And then you subtract that from the current Baker Hughes stock price, and you get four dollars and twenty-seven cents, which is makes more sense so why am I talking about the Baker Hughes and uh, and uh, Halliburton deal well as a market maker what I would do is I would buy a hundred shares of you know I would get long Baker Hughes and short Halliburton right in the same ratio maybe 1.12 and then what will happen is that um, when the merger goes through, I will make this four dollars in ARB uh, spread between the longs and the shorts. So there's a lot of like hedge funds that deal with um, merger and acquisition plays, and what they would do is get long Baker Hughes, short Halliburton, um, and and essentially what you will end up with is a spread, and. Uh, and you would get the four dollars and twenty-seven cents in between. Um, I'm not really suggesting that people go out and do this, just because um, they they do hundreds of thousands of uh, shares, maybe, uh, and, and we're talking like millions of dollars. So all this stuff, and I would I would actually do it in options, right? So I would actually get Long and Baker Hughes options, um, uh, or you know become, you know, get Net Delta Long Baker Hughes, and then get uh, short Halliburton and ho hopefully like basically they merge and then I'll make the spread in between but um, that is not really feasible with a regular account uh, so I'm not even suggesting doing that right I'm just kind of pointing out um, the deal price here so if the deal goes through you can kind of see that Baker Hughes is um, currently trading uh, below what it should trade. Um, I know people are really interested in trading uh, oil because they're trying to pick the bottom. So it might be one of the scenarios where uh, if you were to get long uh, the oil sector, maybe it might be worth it to do it 
with a Baker Hughes stock and um, maybe buy some puts or something, right? Like do a, um, um, do a collar because um, this way you, you, you have a built-in implied upside if the deal goes through. Now, what is the risk? Well, the risk is the deal not going through. So if you can see um, Halliburton, like from its peak, right? So it was around, right? it's around like uh, $74 to 43, right? So 73 minus 43 divide by 73 yeah it's down like 41 percent right from the uh from the highs in in the last summer and but baker hughes is uh let's say 74 and a half right 74.5 minus the current stock price 62.9 right uh what did I use? 74.5 divided by 74.5. Right, so 15%. So basically, what would happen, Baker Hughes is, has fallen off far less than Halliburton. So let's say the deal actually gets broken um, and the talks uh, get broken off, whether it's Baker Hughes, Halliburton, or the government pretty much puts the kibosh on this merger. You can expect a dramatic drop in Baker Hughes. Um, so let's say 74.5 uh, times 0.59, because basically uh, what you're saying is it, it should be trading where Halliburton is trading. So it, it will be trading around $44, right? So if you look at $44 to where it's now, the difference is about $20. And then if, you, if you're correct, you're going to make four, right? So $20, if, you, if you're wrong, you're going to lose. If you're right, you're going to make 427 on that ARP, which is basically uh, five to one, uh, which is roughly, looks like around 84%. So 84% of the time, if this deal goes through, then the odds are um, correctly uh, priced. So that's, that's your risk, that Baker Hughes basically does not um, go through and, and basically the stock drops. Now, one of the things you guys gotta understand is they're gonna get 1.5 billion from Halliburton and Halliburton rejects the deal. And um, let's see how much they make. So they make uh, $1.72 billion in income, which means that they'll be getting paid about a year's worth of income. So most likely the stock won't fall to 44, probably a little higher. Uh, so, you know, in, it might be only about 80% chance that the deal is going to go through and about 20% chance it isn't. Um, but, um, you know, that's kind of the risk. Uh, so for me, Let's say if I was interested in uh, maybe um, getting long an oil stock, let's say, or the oil sector, Baker Hughes might be something that's tempting, right? So if I type in Baker Hughes, and, and um, forgive me if I uh, don't have it all prepared. I'm actually doing this right now. Um, I don't know which strike, but let's say um, second half of the year. So maybe like in, by January, uh, the deal should be done, right? So what can you do? Um, so it should be trading 67 bucks. So you can maybe sell the 67 uh, for four. And you can buy uh, maybe the 57 puts for four. Right, so if you if you bought this uh, once, right, and then you sold this uh, once, 
right? And then you got long 100 shares, right? This will be your PNL. Low hundred, short the fifty sevens. Oh, I might have passed expiration. Sorry, that makes sense. Okay, <clears throat> that's uh, that's user error there. I actually picked the wrong Friday. Uh, it's supposed to be the third Friday. So you can see that you're actually playing in this range, right? Uh, so you're playing in this range, and you're basically saying, um, you know, you're going to lose uh, 600 bucks if the deal doesn't go through and the stock falls below 57 and a half, and you'll make uh, $400 if the deal goes through. But uh, you know uh, at the current um Current situation: If the deal goes through, you, you're gonna make uh, 400 bucks, right? Roughly, uh, because it's at it's 67.94, and you you're gonna um, at this point, um, if the deal and the merger goes through, you're locking in the 400 bucks, and if the deal doesn't go through, you lose 600, right? So instead of losing, um, losing like you know, twenty dollars if you're just long the stock by doing an option uh, by owning a downside put uh, versus uh, selling an upside call. So basically, you're financing a downside put um, to do it. Let's say um, to basically get this scenario. Now, the beauty with this is that now you can really start playing around with it, right? So let's say. For sure, if this deal doesn't go through, and let's say uh, oil price and everything stays the same, maybe you don't want to buy uh, this because you you think it's going to go to forty five bucks, right? So maybe instead of uh, paying four forty, you are going to buy two of these, the fifty two and a half. Why? Because now, now if if the deal go does not go through, you're going to make money. Right, because if it falls to forty-six bucks, right, you're gonna make um, uh, you're not gonna make money at that point. Hold on, let me actually go a little bit further down. All right, so if if the stock goes roughly to um, forty-three bucks or forty forty-four bucks that we've um, um, figured. Uh, the stock would go to 430, 44, and you will lose 300 bucks instead of 600, right? So before you're going to lose 600, but if it goes to 50, obviously you're going to lose double that. So you can actually start messing around. Maybe you don't want to, you know, maybe you don't want to sell the 67 and a half because you think, you know, Halliburton's only going to go higher, and you don't want to limit yourself. Well, you can sell the 72 and a half, right? So if you sell the 72 and a half, now if, if the throughout the year, if the company uh, recovers because oil prices goes back up to, let's say, $60, $70 um, per barrel, then essentially you're going to make $948 uh, and you're going to lose uh, 1000 bucks on the downside, right? So maybe at this point is a good time to maybe, oh, sorry. Because you actually bought these, right? Not the other ones, right? So, so now I have a chance of making uh, up to seven hundred, and uh, I have a chance of losing seven hundred. This is maybe you want to buy two of these because you think it's definitely going to break fifty, 
the deal doesn't go through uh, and it's going to go to like $44, now you only lose $450, but if it goes through, you'll make $700. Bucks. So I know I've talked a lot, but this is something that's awesome with LVX. Is, and this is, this is why I built, um, you know, we asked for this functionality within the option chain, right? Because, you know, in the other ones, when I was trying to do them, I have to like type in all the series and then I couldn't make quick adjustments, right? So you, you, here you can see like, oh man, I need two, but let's say, hey, look, I don't want to lose money. I actually want to make money, right? Either way, I want to make money if the deal doesn't go through, and I want to make money if the deal goes through. Well, it's just basically uh, toggling more of these, right? So, you know, you're going to make 400 bucks if it goes through. If it doesn't go through and it goes to 44, now you're going to make 150 bucks, you know? Uh, so you can actually keep making, you know, maybe you're going to sell two. Uh, See, maybe you want to buy 150 shares, and then you want to sell two of these, right? and then you want to actually use that money to buy four of these, right? So now, if the deal doesn't go through, right, you'll make 46, uh, but you'll you'll actually uh, make more right at 72. The only problem is as it goes higher because you're short uh, like half a contract, you're gonna, you're gonna lose, right? Uh, so what you can do is you can keep messing around with this and get the perfect position you want. And you, you, know, you can see your positions, right? So let's say you don't care if the deal goes through, right? If the deal goes through, you just wanna make the minimum amount, right? So you, you actually make the minimum amount. You're kind of interested in the deal falling apart and maybe that's what you're betting on, then you'll buy more of these puts. But essentially, by, um, by doing something like this on this uh, risk graph, you can see right away what your p is going to be. So I mess around with this, and then what I like, I'll put it in. Uh, I think if I were to get long um, any of the oil sector, this actually would be probably a good play, in my opinion. Just because, um, let's say let's say oil recovers, or, or let's say oil stays exactly where it's at at the end of the year, but the deal goes through, right? You're still gonna make um, um, 768 bucks, right? If provided like all the stocks and everything stay the same, right? So it doesn't have to do any better than it is now, and you'll make 769 bucks, right? If um, if the deal falls apart, you will uh, be capped out at 731. So the, that's the most you'll lose. So it's a it's a but the chances of the deal uh, not going through is not really 50 50, right? It's actually according to the percentage, it's more like 85 percent or 84 percent that the deal would go through, and 16 percent that the deal won't go through. So by the fact of the spread telling you the, the, the odds of it being successful is way higher than 50-50, and then your chances of putting on this trade um, uh, is 50-50, is, is a pretty awesome uh, payout, risk-reward ratio. Now, one thing you guys have to understand, you know, it's not foolproof, right? If, for whatever reason, for whatever, if oil makes another downturn to 30 bucks and, um, and, uh, and, and Halliburton goes down to new lows to like 30 bucks, well, essentially, like you, this, you, you actually be playing in this range instead of this range, right? So it doesn't, it doesn't protect you if the whole uh, energy sector is going to make another leg down. But if you were going to play for a bounce, it would be awesome to play for a bounce where your payout is um, is maybe a hundred percent if the if the you know if the if the oil doesn't even move and then you'll also get uh, paid if the oil goes higher and let's say oil goes dramatically higher and for whatever reason the deal doesn't go through uh, 
you know, most likely Baker Hughes will drop far less than, you know, what we are originally anticipating on the breakup. Uh, so I think it's a good deal overall. But this is this is just what I'm thinking. You guys can design it any way you want uh, and trade it the way you like. Um, you know, it's basically up to you guys. Uh, some some folks like to get if they think there's going to be a breakup, they'll get long Halliburton and short Baker Hughes, right? But that's um, that that would be like a contrarian um, trade. So other than that, this this. I just kind of wanted to show it to you guys for somebody who might be interested uh, in calling a bottom on the energy sector. Um, you know, Halliburton and Schlumberger, those companies aren't going to go bankrupt, but there is a chance that they can make another leg down uh, if the oil prices goes down. Uh, so if you want something that you're picking on a longer term horizon, right? So this isn't something like where you're saying, yeah, I'm going to pick the bottom, bottom this second. You actually, um, Right. If you look at the, let me just go to the rent. So if you go to the oil price, you don't know if it's going to make another leg down or it's going to consolidate and start going up. But you're pretty sure, like in a year, which is like this whole chart right here. Like if I were to extend the chart right to a whole year, like somewhere here, you're you're comfortable that it'll be back to eighty dollars. This uh, this might be a pretty good bet because you are actually. Um, you actually uh, have a chance of making 751 and your max loss is 751. And uh, let's say you get long um, Baker Hughes at 6,000, right? So what is that? Um, say 800 divided by 62, 80. Right, so you can make about 13% return uh, on your deal. Uh, now, one thing that's good is that the vote, I think, is going to be like on March 27th. So it's not like you guys have to wait long. I think if they vote yes, uh, the spread is going to tighten. And you can almost like put this on, right? Um, let's, say you, let's say you don't care. You think, you think it's, it's a good bet. You don't want to have any downside. You can just buy a put, right? So the max loss you can have is 900 bucks, right? And then uh, when the deal, uh, let's say they vote and it gets consummated and the spread tightens, then you can take off this trade. Uh, you can still own the puts in Baker Hughes if you want for the overall general downside risk. Um, and Or you can sell it out and you can basically profit after March. So you can do that. Uh, that could be a short-term play that you can do. Uh, the other one would be the longer term play, but I thought it was a it was something worthwhile showing to you guys. It's something that um, I would do a lot. I would definitely be in this trade if I was down on the floor. Uh, currently, just not a it's it's a no go. Um, I think I might, uh, if I am interested, maybe do a play ahead of the vote on March twenty seven. Uh, but I would kind of look at uh, some of the order flow, and I would try to look at the spreads. And I would have to read more about it, right? I couldn't just do it because I, all I know is the deal is going to, um, that they announced the deal. Um, I think basically Halliburton, just from the initial price, uh, I think Halliburton is overpaying for Baker Hughes. But, uh, you know, what do I know? These guys are probably thinking 20 years down the road and probably 20 years down the road, uh, paying what they're paying for Baker Hughes might be a good deal for them because now they have all their synergies and they can compete with Schlumberger better, you know, all the, all the benefit of having a larger company. But other than that, um, just initial price is very high. Kind of like uh, during 2008 when we had the financial crisis and I saw all these larger banks buying these smaller banks um, for ridiculous prices. Um, that's kind of what it reminds me of, like Bank of America buying countrywide for some price that made no sense whatsoever. And then later on, buying Merrill Lynch for a price that was absolutely absurd when Merrill Lynch was 
um, going to go bankrupt. Um, if I if I sound kind of bitter, it's because I was very short bank uh, Merrill Lynch, and I knew if Lehman Brothers went bankrupt, I was going to make like uh, a ton of money uh, for me at least, uh, like half a million dollars, and basically. Uh, the shock, or, I was so excited that Lehman Brothers went bankrupt because that meant that my short position in Merrill was going to come in. And then the announcement came that Bank of America bought Merrill Lynch. And instead of making half a million, I ended up losing, uh, I think, like 200000 or something like that. But anyway, that, so if I sound a little bitter, that's why. And I never understand why companies do certain uh, trade. I know Dow Chemical way back when bought a company that made like no sense whatsoever either during the crisis. But in the end, uh, most most likely the deal's gonna go through. So if you're long Baker Hughes in any shape or form, uh, maybe uh, owning some protection, you'll probably stand to do pretty well if you think that the oil price is gonna go up. So by owning Baker Hughes, you're playing the upside in oil, you're playing the spread, and also um, uh, you are, uh, basically building yourself a little cushion, right, for, for more upside. There's, there, there's an arbitrage situation here that says Baker Hughes is trading about $5 below the fair value uh, at the current state of the deal price. So other than that, I hope you guys have a good weekend. Uh, I'm going to try to be a little more patient and wait for the right one to trade. Uh, but when I do find the right one, I want to put on a decent amount of a bet but right now, I don't see anything. Um, so that's about it. Hope you guys have a good weekend, and I will talk to you guys next week. Take care.